Hi, Virgo. Welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for December of 2020. Uh, this month's themes around home and family can be handled uh, and addressed really well in a natal and transit reading. And you'll find a link for that in the YouTube description below. But um, we're going to get into it right now. Mercury uh, and Venus are going to be moving into your fourth house. And I think Julia has some thoughts about that. Hey, Julia. Hey, hi there, Virgo. So I'll start with Mercury. That's the planet of communication, mentation. It represents your mind. So starting at the very beginning of December, on December 1st, Mercury enters your fourth house. That's the house of family. That's the house of home. It also represents the past too. So that really means that your mind um, is going to really be focused on anything that has to do with your domestic life, maybe your housing situation. Should I move? How can I make my home more satisfying? You might also be communicating a lot more with your family members or the people that you live with. And since the fourth house also represents the past, your mind might also be preoccupied with, with past matters, things that happened many, many years ago, which are affecting the present now. Mm. Then I'm going to move on to Venus, the planet of relationships, and she begins the month in your third house. This is the house of siblings. It's the house of short journeys. And wherever we have Venus is where we find pleasure. So the first half of the month, it'll be a great time for getting along with any siblings you have, uh, maybe feeling very neighborly, hanging out with people in your local community, or doing a lot of fun little short trips, like going to a beach or the park. Then on December 15th, she's going to also enter your fourth house. Again, that's the house of home and family. So that's really going to bring a lot of harmony and peace into your home life, like getting along well with your family members or the people that you live with. And if you're in a relationship, then you're going to want to kind of be a homebody with your partner. Mm -hmm. Now, the last planet I want to talk about is Mars. <clears throat> And Mars is in Aries all month. Mars has been in Aries for a very long time because it's just finished up its retrograde cycle last month. And this all corresponds with your eighth house. So you have for a, a few months now been dealing with perhaps issues around your shared finances. Wherever we have Mars is where we might face flare-ups and frustrations, especially while it was retrograde. Um, so the eighth house can represent taxes. It can represent inheritances investments. Um, what are some other things? Uh, taxes, loans, debts, those types of things. They may have been causing you kind of a lot of frustrations and, and maybe even anger lately. Um, but the good news is that it's, it's finishing up its long, long, long transit through Aries. And next year, it's going to move out of this house and it's going to feel like a fresh start for everyone. That's going to be so nice. Um, so another thing that's going to bring a fresh start is that uh, Saturn and Jupiter are moving into Aquarius together. And here it is. There goes Saturn right there <clears throat> on December 16. And that also is, by the way, the date that the pandemic hot degree expires, therefore, because Saturn is leaving Capricorn. And then on the 19th, Jupiter follows Saturn into Aquarius, and then they are going to form a conjunction. And uh, we'll tell you more about that in another video. But um, <clears throat> this is going to, uh, Saturn's movement into Aquarius is going to bring a time of testing for, um, for both activism and also tribalism. And uh, Jupiter, during the course of the year, will move into Pisces briefly, but will back up into Aquarius uh, and be in Aquarius for most of the year. And it'll bring expansion to those same themes. This is your sixth house, which is the house of work and health and service. Saturn will test you here. Jupiter will expand you here. And this is going to give you a lot of the background quality of uh, 2021, this activity. Now, um, on December 21st, Capricorn season begins uh, because the sun moves into Capricorn, which is your fifth house. The sun tends to bring the spotlight of awareness, of consciousness, and the sun loves to be in the fifth house. So this is a time of great creative expansion for you and self-discovery. And it vibes, I think, really well with some of the other themes of, um, <clears throat> of this month, including the strong fourth house themes with Venus and Mercury around home and family. Now, there are a couple of moons to talk about this month. On the 14th, there is a new moon and solar eclipse, which is in... 
Sagittarius, and that falls right here again in your fourth house. So bringing up themes of home and family, heritage and roots, and it can be the home that you live in now as an adult and how you make that into a wonderful nest for yourself, or it could be, um, as Julia mentioned, it could hearken to the past and particularly childhood. Eclipses tend to be pretty intense. They stir a lot of things up. This is a solar eclipse in particular, and so it's going to um, probably take a form that is visible to others, not just occurring inside of yourself. Um, so we're calling this one worldview beliefs and resilience because it offers a choice between being opinionated and being tolerant, and that's a very Sagittarian theme. <clears throat> At the end of the month on December 29th, we have a full moon in Cancer, and that falls in your 11th house of friends and community, tribe, uh, networks, and networking, and it op opposes a sun in Capricorn in your fifth house, again, of creativity and self-expression. We're calling this moon balancing healing and taking action because of its Chiron activity. Chiron falls here in a square with the sun moon axis bringing in themes of healing, but also action and assertion because of Chiron being in Aries. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, and there will be a balancing act between the 11th house themes of uh, community and friends and who am I in the context of my group and, uh, and son in the fifth house, who am I just as a person in and of myself? And do I deserve attention? Should I grab attention? Should I do what I want? Or should I consider the group? Or on the other hand, do I consider the group too much habitually? So it'll be about striking that balance. So that is the main stuff that we have for you. Thanks for watching, Virgo. We hope you enjoyed this horoscope. We had fun making it for you. If you did, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. You can find more horoscopes like this on our YouTube channel, Pandora Astrology, or uh, on our website, pandoraastrology.com slash horoscope. And you can always find the news of the month at pandoraastrology.com slash monthly hyphen forecast. And until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye. Bye-bye.